only. Carry on only. Dedicated to inspiring your next global adventure. And now, here's your host and personal guide, award-winning photographer, creative director, and travel expert, taking you around the world in style, Jill Pater. I'm your host, Kevin, with my good podcast buddy, Sam. <laughs> Hello. How's it going, Sam? Oh, it is going well. Awesome, Thank awesome. Thank you. Uh, today's podcast, Travel and Style, is sponsored by CalPAC, and we are here, here, as always, with our resident travel expert, Jill Pater. Jill, how's it going? It's going great. Thanks. Awesome. So today, I'm definitely excited about today. Me too. Right? Somewhere that I have always heard of, never gone to, but really want to. I fantasize about it. Well, I think it's mainly because of the water, right? The water looks down, amazing. Right. Down uh, for it. I'm talking about Fiji. Yep. Uh, Jill, let us, let's dive right into Fiji, right? So I think a lot of people think Fiji is extremely far away, which it really is. Um, is it hard to get to Fiji and is it worth it? So I really want to know, having been there, is it worth going? Yes, it's absolutely worth going there. It's it's not as hard as you might think, particularly from we're ba based in Los Angeles, but from the West Coast, there are direct flights to Nadi, um, and they're nine hours. So it's that's uh, not that bad. It's, it's not a terrible on, flight. I'm going to book this trip right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But when you compare it to a place like Bali, like Bali is very, you know, it's like twice amount, twice the amount of time yeah. to get there. Only a full day. Right, and so having that direct flight makes it really easy, and a lot of night flights from here. So you hop on the plane at night, wake up, hopefully you sleep on the plane yeah. and you wake up and you're you wake in paradise. Up in Fiji. Yeah. It's got to be worth it. Like Love no matter it. what amount of yeah. travel it's got to be worth it. Right. And, and Fiji really surprised me because I I had anticipated it being a lot more touristy. I didn't think I knew I would like it, but I didn't think I would love it as much as I did. I didn't think I'd be blown away buy it to the extent I was. And it's really it's really magnificent. The the whole South Pacific is really kind of a a treasure. Right, right. And yeah. I think that's uh, that's a good point. Is there – are the beaches of Fiji, like are they worth it? I mean, are they oh my as, God. as beautiful and picturesque as they appear? Even more so, I would say. Oh it's boy. it's being <laughs> oh out God. on the water there. Uh, you know, Fiji is essentially an archipelago. So there's just – literally you can like SUP to little islands. I mean, it's just island after island. There's big islands. There's small islands. And, I mean, we took a um, – a seaplane to one of the islands and you're flying, you know, just a couple of feet over the, the water and landing on the water and That's having awesome. a little I'm getting having chills. a little tugboat pick you up. I mean Oh my god. It is that to me the seaplane right. landing on the water in front of an island is yeah. that's that's as good as it gets. And a, a I lot think. of movies were filmed there too, right? Because yes. of this, I would think yes. what uh uh, Castaway? Castaway. Castaway. Yeah. Oh, man. I need Could to be just... in the movies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I need to be yeah. an actor. Yeah. Hang out with Tom. <laughs> right. And what's the, what was the, the volleyball's name? That's Wilson. Oh, Wilson. 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 Oh, it yeah. was Wilson. <laughs> it was Wilson. <laughs> like, what was the Wilson volleyball's right. name? Right. I'm yeah. just wondering. It was Wilson. <laughs> That's incredible. So, uh, did you, did you travel solo? Did you, like, a lot of people think about Fiji and they're like, oh, it's, like, romantic. That's what, when I think of Maui, that's the same kind of, like, idea I have. Um, so is it good for solo travelers or is it, like, group or So Fiji is definitely thing? a popular destination for honeymoons, but I would actually say it caters more toward adventure travelers than, than even honeymoon. Like, I think for honeymoon, probably more Maldives or you know, Hawaii or places. Fiji actually has a lot of, you know, it's, there's, there's a, there's enough grit there to make it more interesting for adventure travelers and certainly any type of water sports you want to do and internally on the islands, hiking and sand dunes. Um, I would say as a solar, I would recommend it not as much just going by yourself. I think you, it's much more enjoyable with another person. Mm -hmm. You know, there's certain trips that, you know, we've been to a lot of destinations now, like London, you can easily do on your own. Fiji, I think having a partner in crime is a little it bit easier there. It just doesn't have to there. be a lover, though. It does not have to be a lover. <laughs> doesn't have to be a honeymoon. <laughs> doesn't have to be a honeymoon. <laughs> right. Absolutely not. Having a buddy, though, like, it, you know, obviously diving, snorkeling, yep. stand-up. It's probably one of the best places in the world for stand-up paddling boarding. I mean, you just, like— The water is crystal clear. It's crystal I mean, it clear. Right. The coral coast. I mean, it's, it's you know, like, tw you know, only five feet deep for, like, 
a mile, you know? And so like stand up paddleboarding is great. You can like be on your paddleboard and see all the coral right. crystal oh clear. So is, is Fiji a place that you originally went to for work or is it just, you got to go cause it's amazing. I, I went for my birthday. It was a big birthday. Oh, so great. So yeah. selfish. Just Happy going birthday. for pleasure right. again. Happy birthday to <laughs> right. me. Right. No, I did photograph uh, a few things while I was there okay. for a feature. Yeah. And you like but, booked those ahead of time and then yes. you uh, yes. kind of put that in your, um, in your itinerary. That sounds amazing. Um, I know this kind of sounds like you could go and end up staying there forever. Right. Um, but for, you know, people traveling there for the first time, how long do you recommend staying? Fiji is interesting because there are so many islands. It depends, you know, again, what your interest is because of the length of the flight, too. I definitely, we definitely did not have enough time there. How long were you there? there for 10 days. Oh, and it still oh, wasn't man. enough time. Yeah. <laughs> it's a place like, you're not going to want to leave. It was painful. I mean, normally I'm ready to leave a place. Like when I leave, yeah, right. like I feel complete. I'm yeah. I'm not like dying and plus to go you home and everything. Right, but... I'm not dying to go home, but I feel like complete on that particular experience at that point in time. In but I was, you know, we were making calls to the airline to see how much it would take to change the tickets yeah. and get a new hotel, and um, so it was one of those. I would I would allow for a little bit more time because obviously if you're you're going to different islands, it takes time to get there. If you're traveling by plane and um, even internally on the island, there's just it, it's again it's kind of one of those places once. Once you start to chill out, you need more time than you yeah. think. So, you need more chill time than than you might think. What all you know? What makes it so captivating? Is it just the beaches? I mean, the beaches obviously look amazing. Is it the food, the people, the culture? Right, all of the above. So the people are amazing, like super hospitable. Um, the culture, the, the influences in food, um, a lot of spice, a lot of curry, a lot of Indian influence yeah. in that region. Um, it, it definitely its own culture and its own thing going on, and you can do things. Lots of things with locals are very friendly um, and hospitable in that way. Um, and then the water, just the the beauty, the natural beauty of the place is so wonderful. And then if you are interested in certainly water sports of any kind, sailing, um, snorkeling, diving, stand-up paddle boarding, I mean, you, you just can't get enough of it. You know, it's almost like the more you're there, you're, the more you want. To stay. To stay. So that and never be- leave. That being said, uh, cost-wise, what does it take? Uh, I So did you guys stay at a hotel? Um, I'm assuming that all the adventure activity stuff costs money and then there's food. Uh, is it a costly place to visit? I, w- I would say it's definitely not, you know, on a in terms of like a top 10 place of budget travel places just because you have a, a longer international flight and that's a direct flight. So, you know, it's... Um, it, it does kind of book up. The tickets are never super, super cheap for okay. that like they are to say. Sometimes you can get really cheap European flights and, and different tickets. For that, it's a pretty standard price to fly there. And then we stayed at a boutique hotel. You know, it wasn't crazy expensive, but it's not – I wouldn't say um, – as many budget options there, especially like as you mentioned, Sam, when you get into the adventure thing. So yeah. like, you know, we rented a boat and went sailing for a day. So, you know, those are the types of things. But so worth it once you're there. Yeah. yeah. I feel like you got to really plan ahead and be like, I know I want to – be a part of all the activities. Right, right. yeah. You can just lay there. Yeah, well, so and it's not prohibitively expensive by any means, but it's not like, you know, there are some places you can go so cheap and, like, cheap, live right. on the cheap. There you need yeah. a little more help with tra- internal transportation and, you know, the activities, too. Are there are there things you do before you travel to a destination like Fiji, you know, to, to track cheaper flights, like, when they might be available or just, you know, really plan out in advance so it doesn't seem like it is so costly. Yeah. So I, um, <laughs> when I'm supposed to be working and want to procrastinate, right, I right, have right. I have a big, I have like a world map. It has all the destinations I want to go to. And so when I'm, you know, need a break and, you know, editing something that I don't want to be editing, I always just plug in yeah. flights. So the site that I use is Momundo and it's a great flight. Can you it's, spell that? Yeah, because sure. Momundo. It's M-O-M-O-M-O-N-D-O. Dot com. Mendo.com. And it's a sponsor us, Momundo. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, it's a great, it kind of tracks all the broker flights for things. And so I always like, you know, again, when I'm bored and want to kill time, we'll just punch in different, like 10 different destinations and see where things are at. So you kind of have a, you kind of have an idea. And then um, 
you know, depending on the time of year, I might have five options I'm looking at. And I'll punch it in. Then I look at the hotels. And then I decide it's time to go. It's time to pull the trigger trigger. on this. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a great way to see because, you you know, one of the best ways to really save money on travel is just if you're flexible on the time, it's booking, you know, booking Mm -hmm. the, the getting the best price on flights and on the hotel. And and that's something you can save literally 70% of the cost if yeah. you just if, if you just watch flexible. it and track it. Yeah. yeah. Right. And that's not traveling at, at on low season either. It's usually kind of like shoulder season, mm-hmm. um, which I prefer traveling during that season yeah. anyway. But you can save a lot of money that way. So you have, I mean, you've traveled all over, right? And, you know, some of our, our previous podcasts, you've, we've gone to London, um, a couple more places that sound like they may be, might be easier to go to, right? Because they're just more, um, there's more happening, right? Like London's a big city. Do you, is there a preference for you or do you find it easier to get around or to or within, you know, some of these more exotic locations or do you prefer, uh, you know, like a London when you are traveling to these different spots? So I like a, a combination of both. I mean, certainly places like um, Fiji, it's, you know, it's a big destination. You're, you know, you're putting a lot out there right. to go to one singular destination. You're not really, I mean, you can travel relatively easily among the South Pacific Islands, which is rare for islands. Usually you always have to fly back to a main port. Um, but in Fiji, you can actually fly if you wanted to do like a South Pacific Island tour. That's, that's very reasonable and possible to do there. I think it's just mixing it up a bit. So I like to mix up the travel. So sometimes you have destinations and coming up on the pa- podcast, we're going to be talking about Tanzania. Mm-hmm. And you're putting a lot of you know money into the flight, into the travel of that country. And then there's other places that you can kind of you know, that are a little bit more fluid, like we'll talk about Berlin and the Baltics, where you can just go from one city to the next. And it's it's much easier to get there and easier to get around. And so I think having that mix, because when you're at a natural destination like Fiji, it's like you have this nature and you do have to give a little bit of effort to get away from cities and to get to some of these like pristine natural wonders of the world. You yeah. know, it does take a little bit of effort to get to some of them. And it's it's well worth it when you do. Yeah. yeah like yeah. you don't want to leave. Right. <laughs> so you <we'll-> don't. <laughs> (laughs) What were the uh, top three things that you did in Fiji? You were celebrating a birthday, obviously, and you did a couple uh, projects there for work. But top three things. Top three things. Well, I say number one is a seaplane. I love being in small aircraft over places. There's just just like, I don't know. uh, I've never heard anybody. Landing on the water, you just feel like. Very risky planes. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) High risk travel. Right. Um, I love the seaplane is like. 100% 100% one of my favorite things yeah. there. I love stand up paddle boarding there because, again, you, you can know, the just snor- look yeah, that at the coral and, and the snorkeling, you're just right there. Mm-hmm. And we st- stayed on the coral coast, so it's literally just you imagine like you know 50 to 100 feet out. And it's just pure coral. You just like swim on top of it or kayak on top of it. Amazing. So the water sports there are just, I mean, it's just so natural. You're just you're just in it. You're yeah. in. You're in it so much. So those would be my top three: the seaplane, stand-up cattle boarding, and then kayaking slash snorkeling. Where did around. you guys stay specifically? Um, we stayed on the Coral Coast uh, at the Maui Palms Resort, mm-hmm. and then we also stayed on Vomo Island. So that mm-hmm. was that we took a seaplane to Vomo Island, which is a private island, um, actually very close to where they filmed Castaway. Ironically, well, yeah. How do you get on? So a you could you island? could actually go there on your honeymoon <laughs> and <laughs> cast away your day. <laughs> <laughs> right, <Yeah. you're> there. <laughs> kind of have both experiences in one. Um, yeah. How do you get on a private island? Uh, the seaplane. Oh, okay. So you got it. You, you have gotta, to know the right people. Right. right. Like, the private plane. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Seaplane. That sounds incredible. Like I would. So the yeah, resort. Would, so Boma Island, it's a resort and they bought the island. And that's pretty common in Fiji. There are a lot of like these little smaller okay. islands that, you know, you can easily walk the circumference. And then you just like stay on that island. They have, you know, everything you need there. Just stay on that island. Yeah. Just your for, own private forget island. Forget about it all. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Are there are with a place like Fiji? Are there any of your you know kind of your creature comforts that you can find or still have? I mean, I, I don't even know. Like, how's the food there? Is there you know, shopping markets? Is there television? Like, I don't know. Like, yeah, <laughs> all those things are there. Are you able to watch? Is Netflix there McDonald's, and Starbucks? Right. You can totally watch Netflix and chill. They just they seem um, so remote. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. You they, all those creature comforts are there, and certainly you have 
you know, a wide variety of hospitality options, everything from, you know, hostels, B&Bs, Airbnbs to, you know, the top luxury hotels. So all that stuff is there. The The main central part of Nadi has a, a large market and you can get all the foodstuffs and, and things that you want. The food there is amazing. They have, you know, a couple specialty dishes. They have this stew that they bake in the earth and it's like a big fire st- ceremony that they do. It's called Lovo. And they, they bake have it a, in the earth. They I bake like it that. in the earth. It's like, it's very, they do a big ceremony it's around crazy. it. It's pretty cool. And then they also have their own kind of version of ceviche that they call cocada, which is, it's a ceviche made with like a coconut milk, um, raw fish. And you can imagine amazing seafood, yeah. great spices, great curries. Mm-hmm. Um, so lots of food options. But yeah, you're not remote. I mean, it is still very much a hospitality destination. So any creature comforts you need, you can, you can get. You can find them. Yes. Yeah. Good to know. Yes. <laughs> Um, so here's one for you. Is there, cause Fiji is again, you know, so kind of remote and exotic. Are the things that come up, you know, while you're traveling within the Fiji islands or anything like that, that just are a shock, a surprise, things you weren't expecting to see. Um, you know, for example, right. I know there are islands in the Bahamas where I think there's swimming pigs. Is there anything kind of (laughs) crazy in Fiji that you just, you know, did not expect at all? didn't expect that. <laughs> I, I didn't see like the swimming pig right. equivalent. But one of the things that really surprised me about Fiji is I thought it would be very touristy, almost like, yeah. say, like a Cancun mm-hmm. of the South Pacific to some extent. And so I was surprised at how natural it was and to some extent how undeveloped a lot of it was. So where we stayed up on the Coral Coast, it was probably like an hour and a half to two hour drive from the airport. And where we were, it's pretty remote. So in that specific resort, there weren't like grocery stores and things that you could walk to or restaurants or anything. Like you were, you were, you're very island lifey there. And so that surprised me because I had imagined it being like just hyper developed. Yeah. Do you, do you like that on your, on your trips? Do you like, um, for lack of a better word, like feeling uncomfortable in order to truly soak in the destination that you're in? Do you like being surprised? To some extent, I guess it depends what the surprise <laughs> is. <laughs> right. But yeah, I think that's a it's a big part of travel. It's like that element of surprise yeah, and, and spontaneity. Not, yeah, and not knowing, you know, exactly what you're gonna get. I was on a trip recently and everything just worked out exactly the way I had planned it. And I, I you, left there and I was fishy. like I'm like I'm kind of bored. Like, this is kind of, like, not as fun as normal where there's yeah. an element of surprise and where you don't know everything that's going to happen. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I think surprise is a is an important element yeah. of travel. Since you went for your birthday, was there anything that kind of stood out besides your top three favorite things that you did? But was there ever a time where you're like, it's my birthday. I'm going to go full out. Like, what? <laughs> I'm just Uh-oh. imagining. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> just imagining Jill on this island of Fiji being like, this is it. This is how I want to spend this you know, the beginning of my new year. Yeah, I think I had um, quite a bit of anxiety before this birthday. So like, so the Fiji was just like a way to chill. And while I was there, it was almost like I booked it in that anxiety of like, this is, you know, turning, turning the decade. And, um, (laughs) and so for me, it was just like this such a big treat because the birthday had passed. And then, you know, immediately after my actual birthday, we had a party here in Los Angeles. And then I got on the plane and went there. So it was kind of like the present. It was like, it was really more the birthday present than the birthday, so Mm -hmm. to speak. Oh, that's great. But yeah, it was, it was, it was R&R. Do you, so when you're, when you're specifically for work, do you care where, you shoot because I feel like for me, right? Like I would, I would go to Fiji every single time to, to <laughs> shoot photography, right? Like, I, I don't care what I'm Fiji. shooting. I would only go to Fiji. <laughs> but is it, do you, you know, I mean, is it, is it things that you think up before you go on your trips or is it just, I mean, yeah, I mean, choose? I think with what I do, it's important to go to new places. <laughs> like I can't, I couldn't get away with going back to the same right. place, you know, because you have to produce like new volumes of work. So it just depends. Like I always have, I always have a big idea list, like at all times. You know, I have my board next to my desk of all the destinations I want to go to, and then kind of an idea of new books I want to work on. And they're usually like culinary based or they're, you know, architecture based or it might just be a travel based book. And so I kind of always have ideas out there and then the blanks get filled in with you know is it the right time of year to to go there is it the right destination at the right time is there something new being built there is there like a great michelin star restaurant we want to like capture and 
you know, do a food book or food journey on. So it's like the stories, I always have like a huge bucket of stories and then like kind of pick and choose based on timing and, you know, budget and everything mm-hmm. else that goes with it. Yeah. And then it all like clicks together. Yeah, it does. It, us- it always does. Well, thank you for sharing Fiji with us. Um, it is now time for Jill's <laughs> <laughs> packing hack of the day. Um, and this time we're talking about clothes and what do you recommend? Sure. So I think oftentimes when we think about packing everything we need for the trip, we think we have to have, you know, one or two outfits per day for every day that we're somewhere. But I think one of the biggest um, packing hacks that I've used lately is depending on where you're staying and if your hotel or B&B has some type of laundry service available, I highly recommend making use of it. It's just it's always easier to pack or to travel with like a tighter wardrobe. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? You know what you're wearing, things intermix, intermatch. And it's something that I really didn't do up until a couple years ago, but I found that, one, it helps you, certainly helps you pack carry-on only. Um, But it just, it helps um, conserve space. You're not carrying, like, 20 things. And it makes you more comfortable in your your trip there, unpacking. You know what you're going to wear. There isn't a big you know, picking out different things, like you know your outfits. And it actually makes it easier on a day-to-day basis to pick up what you're going to wear. So definitely take advantage of, like, hotel laundry service. Oh, smart. And not not pack. Like, if you're going somewhere for seven days, you don't have to pack seven or 14 things. (laughs) Yes, yeah. That's my fault. Like, I try to plan (laughs) one outfit for every day. Maybe even two. (laughs) There's, like, day and then there's night. (laughs) Yes. True. Well, thank you, Jill. Thank you. Thank you so much again. Definitely looking excited for our our next trip. Carry On Only. Thanks for listening to Carry On Only, dedicated to inspiring your next global adventure. Listen to Jill take you around the world in style, live every week right here or 24-7 on demand at StarWorldWideNetworks.com. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share. For immediate access to Jill's destination guides, blog, and show notes, please visit JillPater.com. And follow her on Instagram at JillPater.com.